Hello everyone, happy morning, a very good morning. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. And uh, welcome to today's uh, YouTube live session which is uh, episode 18 in our series of NF100 which is Nikita's FMG Top 100 Topics. So if I have students uh, here who are uh, attending the session for the first time and you are wondering what all sessions we have, let me quickly tell you about that. Before that, a quick note whether the audio visual is all good. And also I have shared the PDF of this session on the Telegram group already. So if you want, you can get the PDF and make the notes as we discuss the images of uh, GI radiology. So today in the short short images uh, radiology part 3, we have the images from GIT radiology. In the previous parts, that is part 1, we covered the chest radiology, RS and CVS. In part 2, we covered the CNS radiology. And this is part 3 where we are covering the GIT radiology. Okay, thank you so much Richard Fleming. Alright. And after that, uh, when will be the part 4 and part 5 of short short images that will complete our series of short short images in radiology. So the majority of the systems have been covered. The remaining systems genito urinary and musculoskeletal. And one separate session that I would like to have on radio anatomy because one question definitely comes from radio anatomy in your exam like it was there in FMG also and even in the NEET PG 2021 as well where you were asked to identify the psoas muscle. So two more sessions to go. The plan for these sessions part 4 would be today at 10.30 p.m. on the app. Okay, it's going to be a free live class on the app today. I'll share the link on the telegram group. Part 5 is uh, okay. Part five is going to be there uh, tomorrow at 8.15 a.m. Not on the YouTube channel but on the app again. Okay. So today and tomorrow our target is to complete these 5 series, 5 sessions of short short images in radiology. Alright. And uh, the other series that is going on, uh, the free life classes that I am taking is NSM and NERS. And we have fast 5 MCQ series apart from NF100. What is NSM? NSM is subject wise, Nikita subject wise master class mnemonics. IRS is integrated revision series that is basically system wise, this is subject wise. And fast 5 MCQs are basically mixed bag MCQs. The series which is uh, aimed at helping you develop the MCQ solving skills. All the cheat codes that I keep talking about the smart strategies. That is what we discuss in fast 5. And NF100 is the top 100 topics for FMG students. So by tomorrow we would be completing 20 episodes. This would be episode 19. This would be episode 20 of NF100. And the NEET PG students I hope you are following the daily targets. We have started with FMT today. So you have to complete studying FMT in the next 3 days starting today 29, 30, 31. I have shared the targets on the telegram group. Uh, we will have the FMT class. Okay, we will have the FMT class, not today, but uh, we will have the FMT class, we will have one test mixed bag discussion on 31st. Okay, that is what the plan is. For FMT, we will have one session on 31st where we will do a rapid revision like mixed bag sort of with MCQs, uh, FMT, KBMD is what we will do on 31st. All right. So that's the plan because 29th and 30th we have radiology. Also remember that tomorrow uh, on Saturday uh, we have uh, radiology another class at 11 a.m. So we'll have two radiology classes tomorrow 8.15 a.m. and 11 a.m. 11 a.m. is INICT PYQs is what we are going to discuss. You have entire marathon of INICT PYQs covering uh, I think 12 subjects or so. The entire day free life classes marathon would go on. You can check on the app. That is what the marathon is going to be there tomorrow. All right. So having said that, let me quickly tell you about the new batches that have started recently. I hope you are making the best use of the question bank as well. FMG students, a reminder for you, Sunday 31st October 10 to 1, please give the FMG mock test. And... Uh, the new batches that have started recently for NEET PG and the final year students, you can make the best use of that. All right. Let's start with the today's uh, class. This is the first image here because this is what was asked in this year's NEET PG exam as well. Identify this bowel loop. What bowel loop is this? Just 
just a minute i'm not able to see the live chat give me a minute guys are you able to see the video i'm not able to see the video well i hope yes i am uh, audible and visible now now fine okay absolutely right so i see a majority uh, of you answering right some of the students had a doubt here now look at this this is x ray abdomen and this bowel loop particularly what we are seeing is if i zoom this image for you look at this bowel loop air filled bowel loop normal and we see that there are these uh, lines can you see going through the entire lumen covering the entire lumen so the complete rings that we see those are called as volvulae conjunctus and these are seen in jejunum right these are seen in small intestine basically predominantly in jejunum so when you see volvulae conjunctus okay when you see volvulae conjunctus which are basically complete rings that tells you this is a small bowel loop that means this is jejunum and because of this volvulae conjunctus it is jejunum which has the feathery appearance that we get on barium studies okay so this was the question asked patient with uh, abdominal pain and this image was asked what obstruction is it then it is your jejunum okay you have jejunum complete rings large bowel will have hostrations which are incomplete rings they will not go through and through the abdomen okay so through the bowel loop so remember this is small bowel complete rings hostra large bowel incomplete rings next one identify the investigation a and investigation b again the last neat pg 2020 question what investigation is this absolutely right this is barium meal follow through okay right it is barium meal follow through so madhavendra remember the terminologies itself when we say barium swallow we have barium meal we have barium meal follow through and we have barium enema swallow matlab we are swallowing that means in the esophagus so we are going to see esophagus in barium swallow barium meal the meal goes into the stomach that is what we are seeing here this is the stomach here on the left side but we are seeing barium not only in the stomach but in the entire small bowel loops so that means this is for small intestine you have followed the meal ahead this is barium meal follow through while the second image that you see the barium the white contrast is from the rectum you are not seeing any barium in the stomach or in the small bowel loops that means we have gone through the rectal route and i hope now you can see this hostrations here right these are the hostrations this is large bowel ke liye this is basically for colon which is barium enema okay this is barium enema this is barium meal follow through and that is what we were talking about the feathery appearance of jejunum if you can see here on the left side predominantly that is the feathery appearance jejunum the ileal loops in the pelvis below those are featureless they don't have volvulae conjunctus okay so that is about very very important identifying the investigation next image identify the investigation a and the investigation b what is investigation a and what is investigation b absolutely right archana investigation a is ercp what is ercp endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreaticography right cp means cholangico cholangio pancreaticography so cholangio means the bile duct that is what we are seeing here pancreatic duct is that is where we are seeing this so this is cholangio pancreaticography here also in the image b if you see this is cholangio cbd and pancreatic duct this is cholangio pancreaticography 
the difference is in the image a we are seeing the endoscope the metallic endoscope that we are seeing here that tells us that this is endoscopic here we do not see any endoscope that means this is non invasive non invasive cholangiopancreaticography is mri what sequence of mri do we use for mrcp next very very important question what sequence of mri do we use for mrcp t1 t2 flare stir what sequence do we use remember it's a heavily t2 weighted sequence why because in t2 water is white you want to make the bile and pancreatic duct white so it's a t2 weighted a mri remember we do not need any contrast the t2 itself shows the white fluid here in ercp basically this is done under x ray fluoroscopy so it has radiation exposure and it requires contrast as well iodinated contrast is required here there is no contrast there is no radiation exposure okay these are the important points to be remembered generally the investigation of choice for biliary or the pancreatic duct pathologies is mrcp because it is non invasive but the gold standard or most sensitive generally is ercp we reserve it if mrcp is not able to answer then we do ercp okay so remember investigation of choice and gold standard next one identify what pathology are we showing here so all these images are basically for one pathology which is that pathology absolutely right prasant very correct orchid that is pneumoperitoneum a very very important image a very very important image for your exam pneumoperitoneum asked in neat pg fmg inicg all the exams so this is the diaphragm this is the diaphragm ka level and below that we see this air which is there the black air that we see below the diaphragm free air under diaphragm free gas under diaphragm pneumoperitoneum rupture of hollow viscous what sign do we see here in pneumoperitoneum the second image this is the bowel wall normally on x ray abdomen the bowel wall is not seen so well here we see the bowel wall very very clear because there is air outside pneumoperitoneum there is air inside the bowel loop so air outside air inside gives a very good appearance to the bowel wall this is called as rigler's sign okay remember this is rigler sign not rigler striate rigler striate is gallstone ileus here what we see there is this black 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 air surrounding the entire abdomen like a football so this is football sign another very important question what is this image showing what x ray view do we do for pneumoperitoneum best is chest x ray erect but if the patient is not able to stand erect then what is the best x ray view for pneumoperitoneum if the patient is not able to stand erect what lateral decubitus will you do right or left it is always your left lateral decubitus like you see here the patient the left side is down this is the liver when the left side is down air will come to the right side air will rise to the right side the white liver will give a good contrast to the black air that is what you see here this is the black air this is the liver so the, we always do left lateral decubitus with horizontal beam of x ray with decubitus it's a horizontal beam okay so pneumoperitoneum very very important tell me what is the most sensitive investigation for pneumoperitoneum first of course is x ray abdomen any patient of acute pain we first do x ray abdomen but what is the most sensitive very good it is your ct scan wherever it's a air containing pathology remember it is ct scan okay wherever there is air containing pathology it is ct scan what is cupola sign sahiti a uh, cupola sign cupola is the dome of the building for abdomen remember the dome is like the diaphragm so you see an a collection of air beneath the central part of the diaphragm that is what is the cupola sign when you see air beneath the central part the beneath the dome that is the cupola sign all right so this is a very very important image pneumoperitoneum asked time and again in the exam 
Next one. Now, this is, these are three different patients presenting with acute pain in abdomen. What is the diagnosis in A, B and C? Let me see who gets all the three right. No, Rahul, fast is basically for patients with blunt trauma to the abdomen. Fast is not for acute pain, any acute pain. It's basically for trauma. And fast is based at looking at identifying the hemoperitoneum, the free fluid in the peritoneal cavity, pericardial cavity or thoracic cavity. Here it is air that we are looking at. So, let's see, please answer what is A, B and C. Correct, A is sigmoid volvulus. What is B and what is C? Very good, Manaswini. Absolutely right. B is correct, colon cutoff. And what is C? No, B is not duodenal atresia, it's not the double bubble. And C, may you see the multiple air fluid levels, that is obstruction. So, remember acute pain in abdomen. This is what we see here, the classical coffee bean sign, right? We see this dilated bowel loop going to the right hypochondrium, giving this coffee bean sign. So, we know that coffee bean sign is seen in sigmoid volvulus okay we see in sigmoid volvulus what do we also see that helps us identify that this is sigmoid volvulus not cecal volvulus is the rest of the large bowel loops which are dilated so sigmoid volvulus back pressure the rest of the large bowel will be dilated cecal volvulus it will be the small bowel which will be dilated not the large bowel so all this i hope now you can identify that this is the colon can you see this? Uh, just give me a minute. Uh, this one. Look at this incomplete hostration. These are not complete rings. So that tells you that this is a large bowel, the hostrations. And this is a classical coffee bean sign. What do we see here is this again is the large bowel. This one, you see this incomplete projections, hostrations. This is the transverse colon. And we see that it is black containing air. And suddenly at this point, the air is cut off. After that, you don't see the black air, it is fluid. So this sudden cutoff of air is what is called as colon cutoff sign. And this is seen in acute pancreatitis. Okay, this is seen in acute pancreatitis. So basically the pancreas inflamed causes the inflammation of the surrounding bowel, splenic flexure commonly involved, and it goes into functional ileus. Okay, it goes into functional paralysis. So like obstruction, we see the air fluid level. Okay, that is colon cutoff sign, acute pancreatitis. This is not duodenal atresia. And the third image here, what do we see is, look at this air fluid. Okay, the air fluid level, the air fluid level, air fluid, air fluid level, multiple air fluid levels, that is bowel obstruction. Okay, so this is small bowel obstruction is what we are seeing here we can see the volvule coniventus complete rings this is small bowel obstruction okay next one now you definitely get one image out of this in your exam uh, image of barium swallow very very important image a b c and d what do you think is the diagnosis in each of this this one is like the favorite all time it appears in the exam massively dilated esophagus with the narrow lower esophageal sphincter that gives the bird beak sign. Absolutely right. That is achalasia cardia. Right. That achalasia. Second one in the esophagus. We see the entire esophagus has gone into contractions. That is cockscrew appearance. Right. The second one is cockscrew appearance. Which is seen with diffuse esophageal spasm. Diffusely the esophagus has gone into spasm. That is cockscrew. Third one, we see this apple core like appearance. The shouldering is what we see. There is irregular narrowing. Apple core like appearance. This is carcinoma esophagus, right? This is carcinoma esophagus. And here in this image, what do we see is there is a posterior diverticulum. You can see it is above in the cervical esophagus, posterior diverticulum. That is Zenker's diverticulum. Absolutely right, Anisha. So, yes, that is Zenker's diverticulum. 
what is the best investigation for zenkers diverticulum best investigation for zenkers not endoscopy not ct scan it is barium swallow which is a dynamic investigation okay it's a dynamic investigation you can see the diverticulum very well so remember barium swallow so all these are very very important and frequently asked in the exam okay next one look at the barium enema images now image a and image b what is the diagnosis So, I have just uh, shortlisted the most important images that we need to focus on here. What do you think is the diagnosis in A and B? Absolutely right. Very correct. In the image A, what do we see is the colon is not showing the hostrations. It's a smooth pipe like thing. It's a narrow smooth pipe. This is lead pipe appearance which is seen with ulcerative colitis. So, remember lead pipe colon is seen with ulcerative colitis okay hostrations are absent second one what do we see is again here this narrowing and this shouldering like thing which is the apple core appearance apple core appearance again important is seen with carcinoma colon not with ulcerative colitis this is the narrow lumen is what we are seeing and it has the shouldering the apple core so that is ca colon okay this is ca colon this is not intersusception. I'll come to intersusception later on. What do you think is this investigation here? What do you think is this investigation here? Angiogram where you see that the vessels are black always. It's a DSA. Angiogram with black vessels. This is not MRCP. What you see here is a catheter sort of thing that you see here and then you see the black vessel. This is the kidney that we are seeing and this is the renal artery branching into the branches. This is DSA. What is the diagnosis here? What appearance are we seeing of the vessel here? Absolutely right Archana. So we see not the smooth appearance but the beaded appearance of the vessel. Right? This is the beaded appearance which is string of beads or string of pearls appearance which is seen in which condition fibromuscular dysplasia fmd again a favorite question string of pearls or beaded appearance is seen in fmd okay how to differentiate renal angio and dsa renal angio is nothing but a dsa itself when you say renal angiography this is how you do renal angiography it's the same right so, DSA may what vessel you are catheterizing based on that it decides whether it's renal, it's celiac, it's SMA angiogram. Okay, basically it's the same. Okay. In CBD, in CBD the string of pearls appearance or the biliary tract, the intrahepatic, extrahepatic, that is primary sclerosing cholangitis. Okay, the biliary tracts, the narrowing dilatation that gives the string of pearls primary sclerosing cholangitis. Okay. Next one, what do you think is this image showing? This is a barium enema. You can see that this is the pelvis here. You have the femur here. This is the colon. What do you think is this image showing? Absolutely right. Very correct. Smart. Very good. So what do we see here? Are these out pouchings of barium? The barium is going out like a diverticuli. So, this is diverticulosis. Okay, this is diverticulosis, the out pouchings. What appearance is it called as? Absolutely right. It is the sawtooth appearance. Again, favorite and a frequently asked question. What is the investigation for diverticulosis? That is barium enema. But if the question is, what is the investigation for? diverticulitis that means acute pain left lower quadrant sigmoid colon commonly this is diverticulitis in that case it is cect abdomen you want to look at the outside abscess where it has spread and everything so that is diverticulosis that's why for diverticulitis cd scan is better on barium enema you might not identify the diverticulitis okay Next one, now comes this again, favorite image, very, very frequently asked. 
you have the single air bubble of the stomach the second air bubble of the duodenum this is the double bubble sign right this is the double bubble sign which is seen with duodenal atresia okay stomach single bubble duodenal atresia stomach and duodenum two bubbles double bubble sign after duodenum jejunum triple bubble sign after jejunum ileum multiple bubbles okay so this is duodenal atresia yes can also be seen with annular pancreas or with large bands okay that is where we can see the double bubble sign okay remember d for d also you can remember duodenal atresia next one what do you think is the diagnosis here So yes, Archana, you are right. It's a donut sign, but look at the other images as well. The donut sign is because of intersusception, or is it because of IHPS? Yes. What do we see here is you've all cor correctly identified one circle and another circle here, right? So when you have one circle and another circle, that is called as the target sign or the donut sign. Which can be seen with CHPS also and intersusception also. Look at the longitudinal image. This is the stomach and this is the elongated pylorus. This is the thickened muscle wall, the hypoechoic thickened muscle wall of pylorus. This is IHPS. The thickness of the muscular wall. It's a muscular wall which is thickened more than four millimeters. Four ka square sixteen. The length should be more than sixteen millimeters, right? Thickness 4 millimeters, length 16 millimeters. This is the barium meal image, which is showing this distended stomach, and you have the narrow pylorus like a string. So this is called as string sign. Okay, so the narrow pylorus string and going into the duodenum that is looking like a mushroom. So you get string sign and the mushroom sign. Okay, so that is IHPS. We know that vomiting, it causes metabolic alkalosis. Management first is fluid electrolyte imbalance to be managed. Okay. What is the investigation of choice for IHPS? If you get the question. What is the investigation of choice for IHPS? Remember, it is ultrasound. It is not x-ray, not barium meal, not CT scan. It is ultrasound. Because it is easily available, it does not have any radiation exposure. It can make a diagnosis as well. Next one. Now, what do you think is the diagnosis here? Very, very important. As in last year NEET PG exam, these are the images of very correct AV Sony. That is intersusception. Okay, this is intersusception. Where you have one bowel going inside another bowel. That one bowel going inside another bowel is what is giving this target or donut sign again. One bowel and you have another bowel. So you have target sign or donut sign. What sign are we seeing here in the barium study? So when you do the barium study, the barium going up, up and at the site of intersusception, it forms a claw because it cannot go ahead. There's the bowel which is obstructing. So this forms a claw. So this is the barium that you see. This is the barium which is basically forming a claw. There is this bowel which is going within another bowel which we are not able to see here. But that is what is claw sign. Very very important. And this is the sign that was asked in last year NEET PG exam. So when you are doing barium study if there is a gap in between the inner bowel and the outer bowel. The barium will go in between the two, just outlining the bowel. So this is basically the barium which is just outlining the bowel like a coiled spring. Okay, so that is called as coiled spring sign and that is again seen with intersusception. Okay, that's a coiled spring sign. So remember claw sign, coil spring sign and you get the target sign. What is the investigation of choice for intersusception? Again, ultrasound. How does the patient present? Red current jelly stool. A child with abdominal pain and red current jelly stool. That is intersusception. Okay. Next one. What do you think is the diagnosis here? 
This is a patient who has come with acute pain in abdomen. I give you only that much history now. These are the ultrasound images. What do we see here? Okay, pancreatitis, no. If I give you another history, then this will become very, very obvious. Very good. Ritvi, Pooja, Swarna. This is image of acute appendicitis. Acute appendicitis, pain in RIF, McBurney's uh, point tenderness. This is the tubular structure that you see here, which is blind ending, right? It is ending here. It, this is the cecum. You have the appendix. So, appendix is the only bowel thing here, which is blind ending. The rest of the bowel loop cecum will go into ascending. This will go into transverse. So, this is basically a blind ending tubular structure, which has a thickened wall. It is distended. If you take a cross section, that is how you will see the appendix here. So, basically blind ending tubular structure. Is it compressible or non-compressible? Acute appendicitis. The appendix is distended and filled with fluid. That is what we see here. So, when you try to compress with the probe, because of the fluid, it will be non-compressible. Remember, it is non-compressible in acute appendicitis. The diameter is more than 6 millimeters. When you measure the diameter, it's going to be more than 6 millimeters. That is what is acute appendicitis. Okay. Next one, asked in one of the previous FMG exam, this is the ultrasound image showing the liver. Let's see without any clue if any one of you can make a diagnosis. What do you think is this? This is liver. Okay, this is labeled here. This is liver. This is not uterus. Very good, Vivek. Absolutely right. So, the diagnosis here is acute viral hepatitis. And why do you say that? No. Because what do we see in the liver here? These white, 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 white dots scattered throughout the liver like the stars. That is called as starry sky appearance. And that is seen with acute viral hepatitis. The liver parenchyma becomes dark. The biliary, the portal radicals, they stand out like the white doubts. So, that gives the... Uh, starry sky appearance. Remember, it's acute viral hepatitis. Next one, what's the diagnosis here? Coming to the last few images. Absolutely right. This is hydatid cyst. What do we see in the first image? This is a lesion that we are seeing. Why will we call it cystic? Because it is black in color. On ultrasound, black is fluid. And we see this membrane-like thing flowing, floating within the lesion. That is the water lily sign. Right? That's the water lily sign. Hydatid. It's the ruptured membranes. Second one again, cystic lesion, black color, having multiple daughter cysts within. Similarly here, you have the cyst within cyst appearance. There is a mother cyst with multiple daughter cyst within. So, this gives the spoke wheel appearance. Larger cyst and you have the smaller cyst, spoke wheel appearance or the honeycomb like appearance here. This is hydatid again. Okay, this is hydatid. Next one, very, very important. What do you think is the diagnosis here? Ultrasound image, the arrows have been marked there. What do you see there? Very correct. So, this is gallstones, cholelithiasis. This is the gallbladder. Why the gallbladder is black? Because of the fluid bile. These are the white stones. Why do I call them stones? Because behind the stone, we see this black shadow, right? We see this black, black shadow behind the stone. So, the posterior acoustic shadowing very, very important, helps us to identify the gall stones. What gives the posterior acoustic shadowing? Stones, bones and air. All of them give posterior acoustic shadowing. So, this is gall stones. What is the investigation of choice? Ultrasound. Okay, the investigation of choice is ultrasound. For renal stone, urinary tract stone, the investigation of choice is not ultrasound. 
it is CT scan. Okay, for renal stone, it is CT scan because they are calcified. Gallstones are generally not calcified, so for them, it is ultrasound. Okay, what do you think is the diagnosis in this image? CT image is what we are seeing here. Again, this is a previous year question asked in one of the NEET PG exams. This is not a non-contrast CT. This is a contrast CT. White bone, white aorta. This is a white bone. You see the white color of the kidneys and all. That is contrast enhanced CT. Absolutely right. So, in this contrast enhanced CT, you can see this structure or lesion here, which is gray color. This is how fluid looks like. Look at the fluid in the gallbladder as well. So, this is the fluid filled that is a cystic lesion here, which is a pseudo cyst that is pancreatitis. And what do you see in the first image here in pancreatitis? This is the area of pancreas. This is the normal pancreas. This is the normal pancreas, which is enhancing. It is more white. The rest of the pancreas here and surrounding the pancreas, we see this gray colored fluid. So, the fluid in the pancreas, surrounding the pancreas, peripancreatic fluid, that all tells you that this is acute pancreatitis. Need PG21 question, clinical scenario was given, a female with acute abdominal pain, vomiting. CT scan shows bulky pancreas. When you are given the pancreas is bulky, that means it's acutely inflamed. Acute inflammation, fluid comes, edema comes, so the size increases. So, bulky pancreas is basically acute pancreatitis. The question was, what would be elevated? It would be your serum lipase and a myelase which will be elevated. Okay. So, this is acute pancreatitis. And what do you think is the diagnosis here in this image? I think this is the last image. Let's see. Look at the x-ray image here. In the x-ray image, look at the arrows here. The white, white thing. What is white on x-ray is calcification. So, this is calcification where this is the location of the pancreas. Whenever you see calcification in the pancreas, C4C, always think of chronic pancreatitis. Chronic calcific pancreatitis. That is what we are seeing here. This is the atrophic pancreas, chronic inflammation organ is shrunken fibrosis and you have the white calcification so that is chronic pancreatitis what is a very sensitive investigation for chronic pancreatitis ercp because what do you want to look for dilated pancreatic duct right so you get the dilated pancreatic duct the side branches are dilated that gives the chain of lakes appearance so remember c c and c Chronic pancreatitis is calcification and chain of lakes appearance. That is chronic pancreatitis. Okay, alcoholic patient, generally they get this chronic pancreatitis. Remember calcification and chain of lakes appearance. Yes. So, that was the last image in GIT radiology. I think that was an extensive, intensive session on GI radiology. These are the must, must, must know images that everybody should know before going to the examination hall as discussed the plan for the rest of the day today we will have a 10 30 pm another session so we have part 4 and part 5 in short short images so 10 30 pm on the app we will have gu and musculoskeletal and then 10 30 pm uh, tomorrow okay tomorrow 8 15 am the class would be on app please make a note it will not be on the YouTube channel. The final one that is radio anatomy important images, musculoskeletal, CD scan, MRI brain. Important like must know anatomy is what we will focus on. So very, very important session. So today 10.30 and tomorrow 8.15, the rest of the sessions in short, short images. And what do we have is tomorrow 11 o'clock we have radiology class. Okay, so tomorrow 11 a.m. And for the daily targets, FMT, we will do on 31st. Okay, so FMT, KBMD is what we will have on 31st morning. Okay. Okay, so uh, this PDF I've already shared on the Telegram group. The previous NF PDFs are coming your way on the Telegram group soon. Okay, they are coming your way. All right. 
So let's meet again at 10.30 p.m. The rest of the images, the two systems remaining, genitourinary and musculoskeletal, only focus on the must new, uh, the must know images. And tomorrow, very, very important session again, radio anatomy. Tomorrow, 8.15 a.m. is going to be radio anatomy. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. is going to be INICT PYQs in radiology. So two classes tomorrow, 8.15 and 11 a.m. And one class today at 10.30 p.m. All these classes are on the app today and tomorrow, the rest of them. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for joining in and being patient, being here. I'll see you again at 10.30 p.m. on the app. Till then, goodbye. Take care. Keep studying, keep revising and keep winning. Thank you.